Hey everyone, welcome back to Grace Don't Forge. So today I'm going to be making this cupping tool which I need for a few future projects. And I'm going to be making this out of some 3 16 thick steel pipe which is about 2 inches in diameter and roughly 8 inches long. And I am going to end up cutting this down to its final length later, but for now I'm just going to work on forging out the rounded edge all around the end of this pipe. And my plan is to heat up the entire end of the pipe, and then using a cross peen hammer, I'm going to start working the edge around to hopefully get a more even curve all around. And it took a little practice to actually get used to accurately striking the inside edge of this pipe at the same time as trying to rotate the pipe in place. And I think one of the things that made this so difficult was the fact that I'm having to rotate my hand around because I'm grabbing the edge of the pipe. I feel like this would have been made much simpler if I had a large set of V-bit tongs, but for now I'm just working with what I have. So as I'm working around this edge and starting to flare out the end of the pipe, I'm trying to be careful not to actually strike on the corner of the anvil so that I don't pinch the steel and actually make it thinner. I'm trying to keep my strikes at about a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to continue working around this rim until it starts to flare out pretty evenly. And once the edge starts to curve out at about a 90 degree angle, I'm going to start using the flat end of the hammer to start to curl back the edge onto itself. And I'm also trying to use my tongs to push back on my hammer blows. I don't want to be hammering with the edge right up against the side of the anvil or it'll undo the curve that I'm trying to put in. And after I have the curve rough forged in, I'm going to start laying out where I'm going to cut up this pipe. And because I'm going to be modifying it to work with my homemade leg vise, I know that it has a flat surface to rest on. But if you have a leg vise that has more of a traditional curve to the top, just keep in mind that this might not work exactly the same. I want this tool to be roughly two inches higher than my vise, and I'm also marking out about an inch and a half of material that's going to stay attached in order to be secured in the vise. And because I don't want any stress concentrations for where I'm going to be bending out the metal, I'm first going to drill out two quarter inch holes at the ends of the lines that I'm going to cut out. Now I'm going to mark out about an inch of material for the vise to hold on to. And then from the center, I'm going to measure out about an inch and a half on either side to give me a three inch wide tab to fold out. Then I'm just going to cut out these lines with the angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. Then 
Then after it's cut out, I'm just going to clean it up by using a file to get rid of any rough edges. Now all that's left to do is to flatten out the tab that's going to be secured in the vise and sand a better finish onto the rounded edge at the top. And to clean up the forge finish on the rounded edge, I'm going to be using an old piece of 80 grit sandpaper. I'm also going to be holding the part off the edge of the vise, using the piece of the tab that I already forged out. This makes it easier to pull at the sandpaper from underneath. And after the rim has a decent finish on it, it's ready to use. Now I still have a lot of practice to do with this tool, but even after a short time of using it, you can really notice a difference in how well it helps with forming rounded pieces like bowls and shovel heads. And as I've learned from others who've made the same tool, it's important to not actually strike on the rim of the cupping tool, but instead to aim to hit in the center of it and move the piece around as you're hitting. This ensures that you won't deform or damage the cupping tool itself. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.